data tells why. We're coming to get answers ourselves. We're not going to get any answers. providers and we're wondering if either Karen O'Ham or Emily Piper would like to come out and talk to us and maybe give us some answers or anyone from the licensing division on child care. We'll be out front if someone would like to come talk to us. From child care. From child care. We'll see if anyone's available. Yeah. Yep. They should probably come talk to me about this. I have emails. I have a letter from the commissioner. I have an email from Christopher Orr trying to silence me. They should probably come talk to me because it's all documented and I'm tired of waiting. My business is on the line and the data shows we're all going away in favor of Head Start and public schools. So that's our signature, Emily Piper. We'll find out. Look at the Robert Street thing. She changed it. Look out! Look at the wall! Look at the wall! Frisbee! We got a political citation! We got a political I want to ask, where is uh, Congressman Emmer? Silence is consent. Hey, I want you guys to meet Elizabeth. She is a warrior. A child care warrior. Girl, tell them your story. Oh, it started when a child fell off of a slide outside of our center. 47 inches tall and we were investigated for maltreatment because of a playground accident. And I knew that other centers had lost kids in the community, not been investigated, so I decided to compile public DHS data. And my colleague and I did that, it's over there, it's five binders, I took it up to the Capitol, testified. I have emails that someone wasn't supposed to send me from the Department of Human Services, Emily Piper. My friend got a citation for having not enough Play-Doh. <laughs> this letter from Commissioner Piper to a representative says that they'll rescind the citation. It was dated August of 2017. In February of 2018, it still was not rescinded. So when I got this letter via email, I said this proves that they're not following through. Well, someone told DHS and they rescinded it. Not only did they rescind that, they rescinded one that they said shouldn't be rescinded. So who's watching these people? Christopher Orr is trying to silence me. I have email evidence of that. Spent over 30 days up here testifying with data. Drove 4,000 miles. A colleague and I did. Actually, a group of us in Mankato did a walkout. 40 providers shut down for the day and walked up and went into a Senate hearing. And we're kind of just tired of hearing over and over, oh yeah, we're gonna form this committee, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. That's great, but meanwhile, if you look at the stats, we've lost 380 centers and 6,474 private run businesses. But guess what's popping up everywhere? Head Starts. Guess what funds Head Start? Part of it is federal and state, and the rest of it comes now through the Child Care Assistance Program. So of course they don't want to talk about fraud, because if that program gets shut down, their whole agenda gets shut down. All of their extra money. People have a right to choose what's best for their child, and it does not have to be the public school or Head Start. And that's mentioned the fact that the data shows that no one's monitoring Head Starts. So the state set up a scam to make it look like Head Starts are great, and private centers are terrible, by giving us citations for pokey grass, plungers in the bathroom and targeting family providers and they won't release that data. They say the counties have it, the counties say the state has it. Who has their data? Molly is a family provider who's not here today, but the administrative law judge doesn't have the final say in this state right now. So an administrative law judge said she was not guilty and DHS crossed out not and changed not guilty to guilty and that's legal in this state right now. That's unacceptable and they don't care. So we demand answers. She's got about five minutes to get back out here and then we'll walk back in and see what they're doing. People think their tax dollars are going <laughs> wherever now. It's going to get worse if it's all publicly funded. At a minimum, you should be inspecting both the same way. People are getting citations for having chipped paint. Kids are kids. Missing two blocks. Olive oil on the counter. Yeah, olive oil on the counter. Olive oil, oil is a poison. Great family child care provider. Licensing. A torn book cover, that was a citation. Water stains in the sink. 41 citations, and we're only a fifth of the way through the data. 41 citations for having a plunger improperly stored. Torn book covers, missing blocks, a stick in the yard, and let's not forget the infamous rabbit poop in the yard. Prickly grass. Just no one's watching these people. They never thought anyone would compile it, but I have a right for the government not to harass me and treat me differently than publicly funded programs.
Yeah, how do you sleep at night knowing what's going on in your agency? Or, or should I more correctly put it, not knowing what's going on in your agency? This is, uh, this is outright uh, destructive to our society, to our economy, to our families. It's just flat wrong and I just don't know how you can, how, how you can justify this to yourself. Carolyn Ham did mention in the meeting that people aren't responsible for the fraud they committed because they didn't understand the cultural differences. I'm wondering what Carolyn Ham means about people having different cultural values. Is she saying that some cultures support fraud? I don't know what she meant by that. that, that I saw her say that. I'm curious about that. I'm wondering how 33,000 people are in the program and they can't track what happens to $100 million a year. I think if you spread $100 million to 33,000 people, I don't know what that amounts to. I can't do that math in my head, but it seems like a lot of money to be allowing to slip overseas in cash and carry on luggage. So we have to save Medicaid and Medicare for our seniors. We have to investigate the nursing home uh, problems. I understand they have a backlog of cases involving elder abuse in the nursing homes. Um, with all this fraud, waste, and abuse going on, why aren't our politicians out here standing with us doing something about this? The governor's called for an investigation. Um, I guess uh, Senator Abler had a conference today uh, with uh, handicapped folks, and that's beautiful. We need more money for our people in Minnesota. We want our tax dollars to be spent here in Minnesota, providing services to Minnesotans, not disappearing overseas in fraud, waste, and abuse. I, I feel that's what I would have to say. And it's such a simple message. So simple. Why does the ELISI tool slash the technical assistance form not align with the statutes? For example, a statute rule says that an infant's bottle has to be labeled with the child's name. But on their technical assistance and their ELISI tool, it says child's first and last name. That's very misleading. A lot of providers are getting in trouble. So why are things not matching up? Why are they making up the rules? How are we supposed to define adequate when the licensors don't even do that for us? I got written up because of inadequate lighting. I asked for a definition, I don't get it. Define things. Otherwise, you know what, maybe you should be writing us up for it. I would like to know when the county licensors are going to all have to do mandated training, such as they should be trained in suets and shaken baby syndrome, so that something such as what happened to Molly, which is a provider's worst nightmare having a child dying of SIDS, you should know what we have to go through and be on the same page as us, not against us. It's being called one of the worst scandals in the history of Minnesota. Our local Fox affiliate has been investigating an alleged scheme involving daycare and what appears to be rampant fraud in a state program costing taxpayers as much as $100 million in a single year. But what's even more troubling is where the money's going, possibly overseas to fund terrorism. Fox 9 Minneapolis investigator Jeff Balon reports. Five years ago, the Fox 9 investigators were first to report that daycare fraud was on the rise here in Minnesota. How much confidence can you say that it's likely some of this money is going towards terrorism? I'd say absolutely, absolutely. Our sources tell us that, uh, good sources. 
uh, from the community, leaders. My personal feeling is we need a nationwide task force to clamp down on on this kind of fraud. Okay, so we understand there have been 10 daycares under investigation. Dozens more are suspected of engaging in this as well. So what is the progress of these fraud investigations? What's being done? that there's a, a scope of uh, uh, fraud out there that we need to really get our arms around and uh, ensure that those dollars are going to the kids that really need them. The acting commissioner for the Department of Human Services told us his agency has 10 daycares currently under active investigation for fraud. We've learned dozens more are considered suspicious. Search warrants obtained by the Fox 9 investigators show each one of the suspect centers has received several million dollars in child care assistance funds. Sources in the Somali community tell us it's an open secret that starting a daycare center is a license to make money. The fraud is so widespread, they say, that people buy shares of daycare businesses to get a cut of the huge public subsidies that are pouring in. 15, investigators documented 14 million in carry-on cash. By 2016, it had mushroomed to 84 million, and then last year, 100 million. Understand, so you don't get too many questions in your mind, what will Mr. Stillman testify, and then he'll step away. And then the department will come up, <coughs> and we can uh, ask them some questions. And uh, my name is Scott Stillman. I worked for the Department of Human Services. I started working there in 2007, became the manager of the Digital Forensics Lab in 2010. My job there was to investigate primarily employee misconduct, especially as it resolved to digital technology, computers, cell phones, servers, emails. And they sent me to a lot of federal training. I've been trained at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, as have some of my colleagues. And I, my skill set is highly specialized in this, in this area. I tracked individuals overseas using their phone to um, compounds in the desert in countries that are not friendly to the United States where they would spend months over there while they were operating their DHS daycare business. My, all, my other duties include Medicaid fraud. Medicaid fraud, specifically in the personal care attendant fraud, the, the dollar amounts and the scope, the size of that far outweigh daycare. It, I've heard it said that daycare fraud is 100 million. I've heard investigators at DHS tell me, well, I've heard the news media say it's 50% 50 50 fraud rate. I've had investigators tell me it's closer to 80, 70, 80% fraud rate. The, the dollar amount of fraud, Medicaid fraud, it, particularly in personal care attendant fraud is way exceeds the daycare fraud. But most of that money is going to extravagant lifestyles, um, drugs, large houses, things of that nature. Could you just offer a little thought about in the child care program, what gaps are not being addressed in the oversight uh, by DHS? Besides the lack of controls, um, it's on -site, unannounced on-site inspections, background checks, um, cameras on site, things of that nature, the, the restitution levels on those cases are, um, I, I would encourage you to look closely. I would say that I was informed that the DECO investigation, which is in the newspaper, uh, so I think they, they obtained $4 million conviction with restitution on that. When that case started, I, told, I was informed by investigators it was actually $40 million in fraud. But because of statute of limitations and policies in place, not all of that money could be prosecuted and therefore collected. So I would say um, if there's indications that restitution is taking place, I would verify that. The PCA fraud and Medicaid fraud is, is rampant. I, I've, um, there are not, the controls in place are inadequate. And I think, um, I think there should be an independent audit of the controls, the laws, the regulations, the checks and balances, things of that nature. A federal investigation would reveal 
that there are there other entities involved in this who may may be receiving um, benefits from this fraud. My name is Carolyn Hamm. I am the Inspector General for DHS. Uh, I was asked to sort of take us through how we do our investigations and necessarily I will be quite vague because we're not going to reveal exactly how we do things because we don't want to be uh, discovered. We continue our investigation as you heard from Mr. Stillman. We continue our investigation as you heard from Mr. Stillman. Blower said that this fraud has been going on for at least five years. So had this whistleblower not come forward, where would we be at today? Would this fraud still just be rampant and undetected? What whistleblower are you referring to? The person that DHS? Scott Stillman. Stillman. When he testified before the uh, senators. What whistleblower are you referring to? What whistleblower are you referring to? We continue our investigation, as you heard from Mr. Stillman. What whistleblower are you referring to? What whistleblower are you referring to? A massive fraud on a global scale. We just happen to be caught in it, but it's a huge, huge global fraud scheme. And we're sick of it, and that's why we're here. For our third protest, and we're not going away because we're just sick of this, and nothing's really being done about it. So we're here, citizens, as normal people. You can join us if you're sick of this as well. This is not acceptable. We will not have our money being smuggled in suitcases through the Minneapolis airport and sent to Somalia. This has to stop, and their people have to be held accountable. And our elected officials have to be held accountable. And people need to go to prison for this, because we're just not going to take it anymore. 